guys and gals. I want to welcome you to the channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, we're going to talk about a few things. I kind of want to start off with beginners and some common mistakes I see. Now, astronomy is a little different than terrestrial photography. We have no special relationship to a 35 millimeter format. The focal length of the lens is the same, whether or not it's a one-third of an inch sensor, or whether it's a large medium format camera. Full frame, APS-C, APH, APS-H, doesn't matter. We don't have that special relationship. So there is no synthetic focal length. There is no adjusted focal length. If it's a 200 millimeter lens, it's a 200 millimeter lens. In this case, it's a 2,000 millimeter lens. The first stop anybody's wanting anybody that's wanting to do deep sky imaging, really the first stop they want to make is to this site here. And this is uh, astronomy tools and the calculators. It's the CCD, CCD suitability calculator. And what you do with this, and you can read all that, it tells you a little bit about what it's doing and how, how these calculations are made if you want to look more into it. Uh, there's the formula. Uh, but the biggest mistake I see people make is take a, a Celestron C8, uh, an SCT, and they pair it with some high megapixel camera, like, uh, say, a 600D, or like a T6i, or any of them, really. And they think they want a lot of megapixels. They want a high-resolution camera. You want to take good pictures of deep-sky objects. But realistically, the very first stop you want to make before you buy a scope or a camera, or if you already have a camera, this should also be one of the very first stops you make to see how your image sampling, or otherwise known as image scale, or uh, sampling in resolution, this is arc seconds per pixel. And this number is very important right here. We're going to go over that here in just a minute, but let me show you what the idea for OK scene, 2 to 4 half max is scene is 0.67 to 2 pixels. Look where this line's at. Okay, So over on the left-hand side, I am way oversampled. Over on the right-hand side, we are way undersampled. So over here, this means potentially we are leaving details, small fine details, out of our images that we could capture if we had more resolution or smaller pixels. Over here, this means that we are oversampling and we're actually spreading the data. It's kind of like spreading not enough butter out on too much toast. Uh, the light is being scattered among many pixels and it's hard to get above the read noise. Uh, it makes it more difficult. Now, there is an advantage to being undersampled over here on this end, but there is absolutely no advantage whatsoever to being uh, oversampled. So there's an advantage to being undersampled and none to being oversampled. Oversampled just makes your life hard. Undersampled, there's some tricks you can do, uh, a couple of benefits, one signal to noise ratio, you're, you're Larger pixels tend to fill up. Your tracking doesn't have to be as good. Uh, so there's several advantages to being slightly, maybe over in here, undersampled versus being even a little bit oversampled. Because this, this over here, this is bad. And this is the, the one mistake I see a lot of people make. And we've got the reducer on here. If I take the reducer off, it clearly goes in here. And, you know, let's just go to good scene. Okay, exceptional scene. Yeah, so see, look at that. We got exceptional scene. Yeah. No, no. The problem here is, is people oftentimes, they try to pair this with a cheap mount. And there's nothing wrong with these cheap mounts if you know how to work them. Uh, these four mounts are... I've kind of chose, as I believe these are people's main entry-level mounts. Uh, this is a new mount, so not much is known about it. 
but uh, and this mount you don't hear much about either. But basically, it comes down to a Heck 5 Pro versus an AVX, and they each have their pros and cons. Uh, the Heck 5 is built a little better. The AVX has things like star sense and it's extreme precision pointing accuracy. The uh, it also has a lost Mandy. Uh, style saddle where the the heck five does not uh, this is the better out of the box mount and this one can be tuned to be pretty darn good uh, it guides different they each guide different this is a servo mount and this is a stepper mount so if someone tries to help someone who owns this mount is trying to help a guy with this mount uh, you're just gonna nothing nothing good's gonna come of it uh, likewise, someone helping someone who knows how to operate this mount tries to help this mount and they don't know how to guide it, nothing good will come of that. So a lot of times you hear people say, well, I do unguided exposures on my EQ6. I can do five-minute unguided exposures. And that's all well and good, but they're, A, they don't tell you their image sampling rate, which is their resolution right here. And I guarantee you, if they're telling you that they can run a, their DSLR, even with a focal reducer on, and get unguided images, get unguided images at this resolution, I'm just going to straight up tell you, they're lying to you. Uh, they just believe that they're actually getting round stars, but what they're getting is they're getting bloated stars. They are elongating in every direction. Each mount has its own periodic error. Basically, the periodic error is going to be much higher than your resolution, uh, generally along the line of three to six seconds, even if they've been peck trained. Uh, there's no, there's not going to be any mounts in the budget territory or even the mid-grade territory, and dare I say, some of the high-end mounts aren't going to do that consistently, ever. And that's why we guide. Now, in this PhD2 session, this is an example of guiding a servo mount with a gearbox. So all you EQ5 and 6 owners are going, oh, he's chasing the scene. No, th this is how you guide a servo mount. Uh -huh. Because this number right here represents what so many people try so hard to get under this total RMS error and this is a pretty good mount here so you see we're hovering about 0.7 we have peak to peaks uh, you know 1.5 1.6 to me this looks potentially like it's it's going to be a little bit bloated stars just because the peaks just because the peak to peaks there, but this total RMS number is not the be all end all. Uh, people look at that and you can still get elongated stars, you can still get bloated stars because of this your peak to peak number. Okay, these two numbers need to be very similar to even. If one is double the other, you will elongate if you're even close to your sampling, and it'll reflect over here. Because this one of these will be significantly higher. So keep that in mind. Uh, you've got to be able to guide. And on these low-end mounts, all of these low-end mounts, the thing of it is, is really... Uh, wrong one. Really, all of these are kind of, I'd just call them one-second mounts. You know? the uh, As good as they're going to do... Now, now, heck, 5 can do 0.5 or 0.7 RMS... But, you know, that's one or two people saying that, and there's some, if you tune it, sure, it'll do it. Uh, this, same way, uh, you know, it's a one-second mount, maybe 1.5-second mount, uh, as far as resolution goes, and that number in arc seconds per pixel, you know, it's not quite as good as the Heck 5, but if you tune it, oh yeah, it'll get down there. Uh, but the peak-to-peak -peak still gets you. So... What happens is, is basically everybody buys a mount, and then they go over here, and they look at some of these cameras that they really want, 
and they think, man, I want the 183 because it's 20 megapixel and it's cheap and I can afford it. Well, if you've got a refractor, I don't know, over about 700 millimeter focal length, that's really a bad idea because this thing has tiny pixels. Uh, and you'll notice there is no large pixel offering. Uh, the biggest darn pixels, the 071 in the, in the budget class here, you know. And, and QHY is kind of the same way. They, there's not a lot of CMOS cameras that have budget-oriented uh, budget oriented cameras that have larger pixels. You have to move up into the CCDs, and they'll get uh, a little larger. A little larger, and CCDs can actually hardware bin versus the CMOSes versus the CMOS's software bin. Now they software bin that on the camera and it does help with noise and it does help with uh, uh, getting uh, uh, your arc second resolution, you know, getting it into a good place. So it can help with the sampling rate if you're oversampled quite a bit. You can bin these one shot color cameras uh, regardless of what people say. They say, well, you, you need to do it in post processing. Well, that gets kind of complicated because honestly, somebody who just, you know, you're starting out and you're shooting the night sky, you're not going to go in and, and create a, a bin in which you're going to take your oversampled image, you're going to deconvolute it, and uh, then you're going to uh, basically integer resample. You're, you know, you're going to bin it, you're going to upscale it. Uh, well, not upscale, you're going to downsample it, sorry. You're going to integer resample it down. You're not going to do that for every single sub. If you took 100 subs, you're not going to do that. Uh, nor are you going to, if you if you think, well, we know, you dummy, you just stack them. And then you do that. Well, you lost all the noise benefits of binning here in the first place. And and really, that's, a, that's an argument that could go round and round. Uh, so don't buy a CMOS and intend to bin it. Just buy the correct scope and or camera right off the get-go. It's just easier. Basically, what I want to try to tell everybody I can is quit putting 8-inch SCTs on mounts that are never, never going to be able to guide with peak-to-peaks and everything uh, under this. Don't do that. See, that's too close. This, peak-to-peak -peak errors, yeah. Don't do that. Make sure that you do something along the lines of maybe and you can see where that changed it wow put an old camera on there it's got big pixels I'll be darn looky there with the reducer this is a doable deal you can get away with this a lot easier you will not have a bunch of uh, it'll be easier to swamp the noise with this camera because you're not oversampled. You're not spreading that light out over all those pixels on that sensor. I want to jump in and say that uh, the quantum efficiency of a camera also makes a difference as well as well depth and particularly older cameras versus newer cameras. But under no circumstances do you ever want to oversample your image in deep sky imaging. For lunar and planetary you can oversample some. That's an entirely different video. One we'll get to soon. So, having said that, you know, when you're starting, between 300 and, say, 900 millimeter focal length refractors is really the way to go. And it's funny, this scope, it used to be able to pick this scope up for, you know, 450 bucks or even cheaper. Uh, you know, it just keeps on getting more and more expensive. This scope is, is it's not nothing special. It's got FPL 53 glass, you know. Uh, that right there, and a doublet matters. If you buy a doublet ED, make sure it's FPL 53. Don't buy an FPL 51. Uh, I would take this over an FPL 51 triplet, just because these are a known quality versus some of the cheap budget FPL 51 triplets. That are basically, if they get out of collimation, I've seen too many bad FCD1 triplets. So uh, this line, particularly the F9 version of the Evo Star 100, is actually it's quite known to be very, very well corrected. So doublets are fine to start with. You don't have to have a triplet to get started taking beautiful images. Look at a few of mine. None of them are shot with triplets. 
I'll also add that uh, a reflector can be a good option, like this 6 inch F4 reflector. Now, this is the Orion flavor. It has a reinforced plate under the focuser. That's one of the things that separ separates it from like the High Point or the uh, TPO or some of the other. They're basically the same scope. But this one has a reinforced focuser, which is kind of nice. This is a very good budget way. They pack a lot of bang for the buck. Uh, you know, make sure you get the right coma corrector. And, and there's nothing saying you have to use refractors at all. So, it's... Uh, and you don't have to spend three grand on a CCD if you if you really want to shoot out of an SCT. Find a camera that has large pixels and visit the site before you just go throwing that fancy DSLR you have on there. Make sure that this makes sense, okay? Because sooner or later you're going to be revisiting my guiding videos or. Uh, you're going to be looking on forums online and getting questionable information. Good information for one mount, bad information for another. And uh, you're going to be sitting here wondering, you know, why do I have such a hard time with this? And it all boils down to, to that sampling rate.